Hi there, um, this is a new video series we're going to start doing um, for CTrader algorithmic trading. I'm going to start really by just showing you some of the new um, API features that have come out in CTrader version 4. Now, currently right now, January 2021, um, version 4 is out in beta, but it hasn't been rolled out to your brokers. So your brokers won't have this, but you can load, download the beta version of CTrader to test. Um, and you can find the link at the bottom of this video. Um, we've actually done it, or actually done a video already, if I drag this across, uh, for the latest features of um, CTrader Desktop version 4, the beta version. So you can go to our YouTube channel, you're probably watching it anyway. Um, just go to the main homepage and actually you can find this video here. Now that will explain to you in more detail all the new features that have been released for CTrader Desktop version 4. Now this video I'm going to do today is just going to show you one of the features um, that have come out for the API, the Application Programmers Interface. So what this is, is um, an interface where you can actually code to interact with the charts or to interact with the um, order management to submit orders. Now the actual um, explanation I'm going to do today or the example is just going to show you how to actually use the keys on a keyboard as um, key press downs or hotkeys where you can press a certain key and it will actually uh, create an event like open a market order or open a buy or sell order. So I'm going to go straight in and show you how to do it. Um, so if you're a beginner programmer or want to start using this with CTrader, you'd probably find this quite useful. Now what you're seeing on the screen now is just the desktop version of CTrader um, with the trade window. So you wouldn't be doing algorithmic trading or creating robots through this window. You want to go down to the bottom where it says automate. So if I click on the automate tab, you can see um, all the different um, uh, CBOTs on the left hand side here. Just make sure the CBOT tab is being selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new CBOT and I'm going to go through step by step and actually show you how to do this um, key event or sort of a key press example to show you how to execute market orders just by pressing a key, a certain keys on the keyboard. So you just click on the new button at the start here and that opens up, that actually creates a new um, CTrader CBOT. Now what you get is a very basic sort of um, skeleton code or a template for you to get started. So you don't have to keep writing it every time. And what you do now is you now actually start creating the um, body of the code for what you want it to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually change the name of the CBOT. Now if you ever click away accidentally, you can just click on it down here, bottom left, right click your mouse and rename. Now I'm going to call this key press example and make sure it's uppercase key. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to build it by pressing this little icon here. Now it hasn't actually updated the class name. It still says new new C bot. So I'm just going to call this key press example. Okay. So we don't need any access rights for this. So I'm going to leave this as none. So I'm going to go through step by step. I'm just showing you a very basic um, overview of how to actually add key press events um, onto this C bot. Now, we don't actually, the examples that we're going to do through all of our video series, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2019 or 20, whatever. Now, I'm going to show you how to download that. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to edit the code using this integrated environment. I'm going to show you how to do it using the um, Visual Studio um, integrated development environment, which is more um, powerful and definitely much better for you to get started using straight away. Now, actually, to find it, it's download, to, sorry, to download it, it's free. You just come to our website at clickhyra.com. If you go under programming and you go to learn programming, okay, it's got some C-sharp tutorials here to help you with learn how to use C-sharp and some videos. Now you want to download the Visual Studio community because the community version is the free version. So if I click on there, go to the Microsoft website. Now you can download the community version of 2019. I would just go with the 19 and you just click on there and it will download it onto your PC and you can actually start using it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now it's show you how to, once you've installed Visual Studio onto your PC, you'll actually need to add an extension. Now, this extension, I'll add another link on the YouTube channel and I'll show you how to get access to that, how to get hold of that extension so that you can actually do what I'm about to do now. So just by installing Visual Studio 2019, you're not going to be able to right click on the CBOT here and choose edit, with, edit in Visual Studio and that launches Visual Studio straight away. Um, you have to install an extension onto Visual Studio to allow you to do this. And I'll provide a link on this YouTube channel at the bottom when this video is done. So if I click edit in Visual Studio, it now automatically opens this. Okay, and what you should see is this complete copy of the code that we had um, for the, um, sorry, the uh, 
C, C Traders development environment. It's a complete copy, but it's in Visual Studio, okay? So we're gonna edit the code in here now. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually define the parameters that I wanna use, okay? So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this one here. Now, instead of typing it out, I'm actually gonna copy and paste because I've got one I've done earlier. Now, you can type out, most of the code you'll do will be copy and paste anyway. So I'm gonna start with this one, which is quantity lots. Okay, so again, at the bottom of this video, I'll supply a link to get access to this full source code, but I'm just gonna start creating it one by one now. So the parameters I'm gonna put in all now are all the parameters that we're gonna use. Now what these mean, these are adjustable parameters so that when you start the CBOT, you can make changes. I'll explain that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is just build this. Okay, I'll just save it and take it off the chart. Now you can see the update has gone on there straight away. If you want a dual screen, it's much easier. Now I'm gonna build it now and just add a CBOT instance. To do that, you just click on the plus sign or you right click and do add instance. Now it's picked your USD. Now you can see that these parameters that I've just created here are now shown as your parameter window for the CBOT. Okay, you've got them all set up there. So I'm gonna drag this back across. And now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wrap the adjustable settings for that in a thing called a region. Now the, region, the reason I'm gonna do this is because it's, it's much better to get into a practice of doing it now, so you can collapse or expand blocks of code um, to help you work with it a lot easier. Now I'm gonna call it CBOT settings. And then I'm gonna put the other region at the bottom of this. So I just go hash end region. You can just Google uh, regions on Visual Studio and if you Google it, it'll give you more information. Now I've done that, I can just click on the minus um, tab there, minus uh, icon, and you can collapse it or expand this actually block of code. I'm gonna do that for all of it actually. So I'm gonna do this one here for the C Trader event. So these are the C Trader events. You've got one called on start when the CBOT starts. You've got one called on tick when, it, when every time there's an incoming price change or every time there's a ticket data. And you've got one called on stop. Now there's another one called on bar which gets called every time a bar closes or a candle closes. Now there are other videos that I've done the uh, tutorials on our old algorithmic trading school, and they actually go into this in more detail. I'm just gonna briefly go over, over some of these because um, I wanna focus in this video actually just how to use this new feature or the new API for key events. So I'm gonna do a um, region here as well. I'm just gonna call it C Trader Events, and I'm gonna end it at the bottom. Now I've done that, I can collapse the code for the C Trader events as well. Now I'm gonna create um, another one, one more region, um, and that is for order management. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the one I've done already because it'll be a lot faster. And I'll explain this one in more detail in a minute, but that's where the orders, the code will go for submitting orders. So right now the code we've got is very basic. You just got your adjustable settings um, and you've got your events for CTrader and there's just some regions put in there for expanding or collapsing the code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, add the um, event handler for capturing key presses on a screen. Now to do that, um, you need to do that in your on start. So your on start is where you do your event handlers for capturing certain events. So I'm just gonna do chart dot and it's actually called key down. And you can see that it actually comes up and shows you the different types of events. This IntelliSense, you've got this in Visual Studio. I don't think you've got that on the C Trader version of the development environment. And you just go plus equals, and I'm gonna call it um, char underscore key down. Okay. Now, once you've done that, that char underscore key down is actually a method that needs to get called every time there's a key press. Now, that method cannot get called unless you actually implement it. Now, the easiest way to implement this with Visual Studio is just to click on this little warning uh, light bulb and you've got um, generate method um, key press example dot chart key down. Now, if I click on that, that will automatically create the method for you. So you don't have to type, write it, write it out or anything. Or you could quite easily just copy and paste from a previous example. Now, I'm going gonna, gonna to remove this here, the um, not implemented exception, because we are going to implement the code. So this method here is where you'll actually put capture the key event. So what we're going to do, first of all, for example, is just print to the screen the, but the key value that you actually press on the keyboard. So I'm going to go at print, have to be uppercase P, print. Um, I'm going to put key down. And I'm actually gonna put the value that actually comes in from this object. So 
when this method gets called, so this event here means that every time that there's a key pressed on the keyboard, this method here actually gets executed. This blocker code gets executed. The value that you press, the object value, comes in this little object parameter here. So I can just put obj dot um, key. Now, this example now with a semicolon, this example now will actually, um, every time there's a key press on the chart, it will um, capture that event, execute this piece of code here in this method called chart underscore key down, and it will actually print to the log, the cbot log, the actual value that was printed. So the parameter is not being used it yet. It's just a very, very basic example to capture this value. Now what I'm going to do, I saved this, which means it's going to update it on the um, CBOT window for here. And you can see these values have been updated. I then need to build it by pressing a little icon there. Now what I'm going to do is just click on the um, instance here that we've created. We can see the chart. And you need to make sure that the log uh, tab is at the bottom here. You can access that by I'm clicking the parameters window there. Actually, before I do continue, if you are watching this video, um, if they have not rolled this out to the broker yet, um, the beta version, and you're using Ctrader 3.8, it won't work. This new API is only for version 4. And version 4 is currently in beta, which means that it's not going to be tied to your broker. It's just for, it's just for use to make sure um, that the users can actually find any bugs for them. If you, check, if you just Google beta software, you should also find out what that actually is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to press the Start button here. And we've got the Log here. I'm going to click on the Log tab. Now it's started. So literally, if I press any key now, it will actually print it to the screen. I'm now going to press a P. I'm now going to press a B. E, L, Q. So whatever button you press now actually captures it and actually prints it to the screen with this object, uh, this method here saying print key down. So, so far what we've done, we've made sure that um, we've created the event handler for capturing key presses and we've got the method that gets executed and prints to the chart that value. What we're going to do next is um, the whole idea of this actual example is to show you how to actually um, submit orders by pressing certain keys. So on a keyboard, um, you've got the, um, what is it, the Z, sorry, the A and the Z, which are very close together. So you can do A for um, buy and Z for sell. So depending on which key press you do, you can actually determine um, by opening buy or sell orders. Now, what we've done at the top here, what I've done is actually created two adjustable settings so that the user that's using this CBOT can decide what keys they want to use for opening positions. Now, later on, I'll show you how to do that with multiple um, symbols for you can have different values for different symbols. So what we're going to do, we're going to use whatever adjustable setting that the user selects. In this case, it's A and Z, and we're going to use those for opening a buy or a sell position. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just create um, just put a comment on the above here. So the code we're going to supply will actually have comments for you to read. Um, and then I'm going to actually go through the rest of it. So I'm going to get rid of this block of code. Now, the next thing that's very useful that you would need, and you might forget, is that when you have a chart in Ctrade, if you've got, say, four or five charts open, the chart that you're viewing is the active chart. Now, if you're using key presses to determine opening buy or sell orders, you don't really want to be opening up buy or sell orders for a chart that you're not actually physically viewing, which might be for a different symbol. So to make sure that when this spot CBOT is running, it only works when the chart is open, just in case you accidentally press a key and open an order, I would do something like this. You can do chart dot is active. Now, this if statement will only get executed if the current chart on the screen is active. Now, I'll show you that when we do an example on the screen. Now, the next step is to capture the key events and then open up an order. So I'm going to actually just show you how to do that um, using an if statement again. I can then just go if the obg dot key, which is the actual value we're capturing, now it has to be converted to string, equals the key press by, okay, which is the actual declared value at the top. So key press by is this value here. So whatever you put in this parameter, whatever you set on the window here, let's go back into here, an A or a Z or whatever value, will actually get um, picked up with the key press by. Now, there are different ways of skinning a cat. I could have done different ways of actually implementing this, but I'm trying to do it the most simplest way for um, new programmers to use. Now, if that happens, I want to submit an order. So I want to go submit order. Now, that isn't actually a method that's used by Ctrader. Um, we're going to implement this method. And I'll show you that now. 
So I'm now going to go to the order management here and I'm actually going to implement the code to submit an order. But rather than type it out, I'm just going to copy and paste what I've done previously. So this method here gets called from here every time there's a key press that you've defined here. So if the key press is an A, um, for a key press by, it will say, are you looking at the active chart? Yes. Was an A um, key press or an A event, a keyboard, the A letter was pressed? Yes. Submit the order. It'll actually go and then go to the definition, which is here. And because I'm passing the trade top type as by, which is um, a value that we can use, it actually comes in, it already knows the trade type. It picks up the quantity. So I'll go through quickly on the submit in order. Picks up the quantity, which is defined here. So again, that's a, uh, a parameter that you can set here, the quantity. And it can only be a positive value. And then um, it actually picks up the symbol name. So the symbol name is the current symbol for the instant that you're using. In this case, the symbol name is Euro USD. So that's the instance that you're using. OK, and the volume in units, which is again calculated here from the quantity. So the symbol dot quantity to volume in units will actually convert the unit values into a volume yet values, which is used to execute the market order. We've also got a um, another setting. If I put the comma there, you can see that it's got the label. So this shows you the different parameters that it's expecting this execute market order. You've got the trade type, the symbol name, the volume, the label, the stop loss in pips and the take profit in pips. So we're going to call this. Um, this uh, label key press example and this gives you an identifier when you're looking at the log of knowing which um, trades have opened from this CBOT. So then you've got your stop loss and take profit which you can again um, define up here stop loss and take profit which again I'll go back on here you defined as 14 uh, 14 whatever you can change these to anything you want again you can change the lots to what you want and you can change these characters to whatever you want okay um, I'll go back to the code again so I'm trying to explain this as best as I can to cover every little area, um, and I might miss a few, I hope not. So now once that's executed a market order, that sends the order to the broker um, to be executed. In this case, it's just a demo. Um, a result comes back. So it comes back, the order's executed, and a result comes back, and it says, so from the broker, um, you can actually capture if there's an error, and there's different types of error codes. In this case, we're capturing no money, but these are all the error codes that you've got. Disconnected, invalid request, market closed, no money, technical error timed out, unknown symbol. So we're just going to capture no money. And if there's no money, it just stops the robot because you don't have enough money in your account. So we're going to leave that there. OK, so I've implemented for a buy. Now I'm just going to copy and paste again. And I'm going to do the same thing for a sell. So here for a sell, I'm going to copy that paste it into there and I'm going to change this the type to sell so so far what will happen if you were to run this is nothing oh yeah it will actually what we're talking about if you were to run this now because it's pretty much done um, it will actually execute a market order depending on what symbol you press now I'm going to briefly go through the whole lot and then I'm going to give you the example on Ctrader showing it in uh, being used so for starters we've got the CBOT settings here now on the CBOT settings you've got your quantity and volume stop loss take profit the key press you want to use for buy and key press you want to use for sell. Then we're going to capture the market event, sorry, capture a key event with an event handler so that whenever a key is pressed, it calls this method here. I'm going to put a label on the top of that. And I'll just copy and paste. So when this method gets called when a key press event on the keyboard happens. So any keyboard that event that happens, this method gets called in the object here. It passes the actual value that's been passed in or been pressed, sorry. Now we're going to check is the chart, chart is active. So has the user actually, is the user visibly looking at the chart? If yes, then it will actually execute this block of code and check that the correct key presses are um, pressed and, and submit an order either for a buy or sell order. Then it goes down to this method. So if it is a key press that's right, it will submit the order for a buy and it will go here and execute the market order. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do, there's two ways of building this. You can right click here and just click build and that'll build it through Visual Studio. Or if I drag this off, I can press the little build icon there. So you can, um, first of all, you can actually just test that this is working correctly by, um, I'm just going to clear the log there by clicking on the press start. Sorry. Now, whenever I press anything on this chart now, it's going to open up a buyer or a sell order and it's going to have a stop loss of 35 and a take profit of 40. We've got a quantity of 0 0.01 lots. So if I press an A now, it's opened up a buy order. And if I press Z, it's opened up a sell order. Now, if you have a look, it's opened up the orders with the correct uh, top loss and state profit and 0 0.01 lots. Now, if I stop the robot, 
and close all those positions. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how to use this, how you would use it through the CTrader trade window and not through this window because you'd be trading through the trade window manually and not through here. So I'm going to go to the trade window. Now I'm actually going to close this window to the right here. Um, okay, I'm going to close all the windows. Actually, no, I want to keep that one open. I just want to get rid of the one to the right. Actually, hold on. Control E. They've got shortcuts now. I should have learned those. Okay, so we've got one chart on the screen. Now I want to add the CBOT to this chart so I can start using it. The quickest way with version four now of CTrade is just to press the space bar. The space bar comes up with um, a really cool sort of search everything window. Top left, you can see it. Now if I start typing in key press, um, I'm going to select the key press example. Now, the first thing you'll see is the adjustable settings window. So I can set now what values I want to use for opening up a position. I can choose the lots, as I said before, what keys you're going to use and the stop loss and take profit. I'm going to apply that and I'm going to press start. Now, if I ever click a key, an A or a Z, it will open up a buy position or a sell position. I'm going to stop the robot. Now, what I want to show you is if I open up another chart, I've got two charts now. I want to do the same again. I want to attach this CBOT that we created to this window. Now with this one, I can have different settings. It doesn't have to be the same. I can have a quantity of 0 0.02. I can have different key, key presses. Um, the whole idea of the active chart is that you can have the same key presses. So if you're using the active chart, like I'm saying, and the active chart is this chart here, GBP USD. This is the one that's active that I'm viewing. If you have this and you have the same key press values, A and Z, for all of your symbols, then it will only execute the trades for the chart that you're viewing, the active chart. But you can also um, create different values or different key values for different symbols. Um, and you can also get rid of the chart. Um, you can also get rid of the chart um, is active bit of code. And you can actually, whatever your chart you're looking at, you can execute trades for other symbols without having to look at the active chart. That's something that you can do yourself. So again, you can change this value as well. I can go 10 and 10 and apply and press start. Now, whatever chart I'm looking at, I can actually then press the A value, opens up a um, GPP USD. If I go to Euro US, Audio USD and I press A, oh, I've got to start the CBOT. If I press A, it opens up for Audio USD. There you go. And again, for uh, cell values. Okay, that's the example. That's as far as I can go with that. Um, one thing I will do is just go back to the code um, in Visual Studio and just hopefully tidy a few things up. So again, if you've got regions, you can just collapse all the regions and make the code look a lot neater if you're actually doing the coding. Um, and you can actually change the code um, if you want. So you can create new key events for closing the positions. Now, I won't do this in this video. I'll leave that for you to do. It's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is create two new sets of parameters okay, um, for key presses. I'll just quickly show you to create a two. I'll copy those, paste those, and I'll put um, key press close by. So you can have a close by one and you can actually have a close by as, I don't know, a queue and you can have key press close sell and you can have that anything you want. Actually, I'm going to leave it uppercase to so make sure they're uppercase, I think. I think they need to be uppercase, not lowercase. I'm going to do P and Q. So P and Q would close a buy and close a sell. It's highlighting an error there because we need to have a different parameter name. So you could do close buy, close sell. So there's your parameter settings ready for you to actually implement the code for also closing a position. Now to close a position, you just add more if statements here and check for these values. And instead of submit, submit an order, you just close it. It's very simple. I could add that for you very easily now, but I'm going to leave you guys to sort that out. And uh, hopefully you can find a way to do it so you can use this and start developing on it in your own system. So that's it. That's the video. Um, again, if you're not familiar with who you are, click like you can come to our website. Um, we sell trading software and tools, and we're also doing um, educational stuff. You can find our algorithmic trading school here, which is a bit outdated. This is why this video is a new one, and we're going to start showing you the new features of CTrader and using the API. Um, not sure what format yet. And the other thing I wanted to show you was our YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with it, you can actually come to our YouTube channel. And if you're watching it now and you are on YouTube, just subscribe to our channel and please like this video because by liking this video, this really helps us in generally to bring more, it actually helps bring more customers to our website and we can create more free educational tutorials for you to help you learn how to do algorithmic trading. Thank you very much.